We are going to implement a basic GWT authentication workflow in Nest.js. The way this works is that first, the client sends their email and password to our login endpoint. We validate if the user exists and if the password is correct. If everything's okay, we create an access token with the user information and send it back. Now, the client can add that access token to the authorization header on the requests to our protected endpoints. We validate that endpoint on each request, and if it's valid, we give them access. Let's start by creating a new Nest.js project. I'm going to use MySQL and type ORM to save the users, but you can use any database and library you want. Neither MySQL nor type ORM are required. Now let's register type ORM on Nest.js and add the database credentials. Let's start Nest.js to verify that it's working. Now we need to create a user's module and a user service so we can register and log in users. Next, we need to create the user entity. It will have an ID, email, first name, last name, and a password. And you can add any other data you want. Now let's register the user entity on the user's model. Let's also export the user service and type ORM so we can use them on other models. Next, let's create the add model, service, and controller. This is the model that will handle the authentication flow and make use of the user service we just created to handle saving and retrieving users. Before working on the add model, we need to create the users table on the database. For this, we will create a type ORM data source so we can generate a migration from the user entity. We also need to edit the package.json file to add the type ORM commands to generate and run migrations. I will add them on the description along with the GitHub project, so you can simply copy and paste them. Next, let's rebuild the project. Let's generate a new migration file. This migration will be generated depending on the entities we have. Now we need to rebuild the project. Then we need to run the migration to create the users table on our database. Let's open the add controller and inject the add service. We will start with the register endpoint. This will be a post route that will receive the user data. For now, let's pass the body to the register method of the add service that we haven't created yet. This method will create a user and return it. I will add a Visual Studio Code launch JSON file to activate the debugger so I can stop the code and show you the values. This is completely optional. I will also use Postman to call the endpoint we are working on. You can use any client you want. The client will send the username, email, first name, last name, and password on the body. We will start by extracting the password from the body. Let's return back the password to validate that it's working. As you can see, when we call the add slash register endpoint, we get the password back. We should never save a user's password as plain text. We are going to encrypt it before creating the user. For this, we are going to use the vcrypt library. Let's use the hash method of the vcrypt library to encrypt the user password. This method takes a string as parameter and returns a hashed string. The second parameter is a number that specifies how many rounds we want to randomize the salt. The salt is random data used when encrypting data. For now, let's return the hashed password to see that it's working. As you can see, we got an encrypted version of the password. Next, let's open the user service and inject the user repository so we can access the user's table to retrieve, save, and update users. We are going to write a create method to save the user to the database. This method will take the user data as parameter, and we are going to call the save method of the user repository. Finally, we return the created user. Let's import the user model inside the add model, so we can use the user service inside the add service. Now let's inject the user service. Let's create a new object with the data we receive in the register endpoint. 
but we are going to replace the original password with the encrypted version and we are going to pass it to the create method of the user service. This way, we will create a user with the data we sent with Postman and securely save the password. And finally, let's return the created user. As you can see, the user was created with the data we sent and we got the created user back. With this, the register endpoint is complete. Now, let's start working on the login method. Let's go back to the out controller and add the login endpoint. This endpoint will call the login method. From the client, we are going to send the user's email and password. Let's start by extracting the email and password from the body. Let's go back to the user service and create a find method so we can retrieve the user from the database using the email we are receiving. Back in the out service, let's call the find method of the user service and send the email as a parameter. We will save the found user in a variable. If a user with that email was not found, we are going to throw a not found HTTP exception. As you can see, if we send the correct email, we get the user back. Otherwise, if I use an email without a user, we get a not found message. We also need to validate that the send password matches the user's password saved in the database. For this, we are going to use the compare function of the bcrypt library. This function allows us to compare an encrypted and an unencrypted string. We are going to compare the unencrypted password sent from the client with the encrypted password stored in the database. If they match, it will return true, otherwise it returns false. If they don't match, we are going to throw a forbidden exception to indicate that the client doesn't have access. As you can see, if we send a different password, we get an invalid password message. The next step is to create an access token and send it back in the login endpoint. For this, we are going to use the GWT library. Let's open the out module and import the GWT module. When adding this module, we need to define a secret key. This key is used when encrypting and decrypting tokens. We also define how long do we want the created tokens to be valid. In this case, we will give them 60 seconds before they expire. It is very important that this secret key is safely stored. For this tutorial, I'll simply add it to a constant. But in a production environment, it should be added via environment variables. Back in the login method, we are going to create the content of the token. We are going to add the user ID and the user email. Let's install the nest GWT library and inject the library in the out service. To create the token, we are going to use the sign function of the GWT service. This function takes the content you want to add to the token as a parameter and returns an encrypted token. And finally, let's return the token. As you can see, if we enter the credentials correctly, we get a token from the login endpoint. If you copy and paste the token in the GWT IO website, you can see that the decoded token includes the ID and email we added, plus two additional parameters added by the GWT library. The X attribute defines the time this token will expire, and the EAT defines the moment the token was created. Now, let's create a guard that we can use to protect the different endpoints of our application. It will validate that the request includes the token in the authorization header and that the token is valid and hasn't expired. We are going to implement the can activate interface. This interface defines a can activate method that returns either true or false and gets executed each time an endpoint gets called. The logic inside this function defines if we allow the client to enter the endpoint or not. In our case, we are going to check if the header includes a token. But for now, let's just return false. Let's go back to the add controller and add a user info endpoint. For now, we will simply return an empty user info attribute. We will protect this endpoint with the guard we just created. Because we always return false from this guard, 
the endpoint will always return an authorization error. Next, let's log in again and copy the token and add it to the authorization header with the text better before the token. Now we are going to actually start adding the validation logic on the guard. We can get access to the request headers with the context variable. If I stop the debugger, you can see that the request has the authorization header with the tokens we are sending from Postman. Let's create an utility function to extract the token from the headers. We are going to split the authorization header and check if it includes the better text. If it does, we are going to return the second part of the split string, that is, the token. Let's make use of this function to get the token inside the guard. If I stop the debugger, you can see that we extracted the token from the header. If the authorization header does not include a token, we are going to throw an authorization exception. Next, we are going to try to decode and validate the token. Let's inject the GWT service so we can use it to decode the token. We are going to use the verify async function of the GWT service to validate the token. We are going to pass the same GWT secret we used to encode it, which is the secret we added when we registered the GWT module in the out module. If the verification fails, we are going to return the verification error. If nothing fails, we are going to return true to give access to the endpoint. I forgot to add braces to the constructor. Let's restart the application and call the user info endpoint. As you can see, the verification works and the token is invalid because it has already expired. Remember, we only gave it 60 seconds before it expires. Because it's invalid, we return an authorization error. Let's log in again and copy the token before it expires. As you can see, the verification passes because the token is now valid and we return true from the guard, giving access to the endpoint. For now, let's increase the expiration time to 24 hours so we don't have to keep logging in. Log in again and copy the new token that will be valid for 24 hours. And because we now have access to both the request and the decoded token, we can add the user information to the request context, so we can access it on any protected route. As you can see, we have access to the decoded token with the user email and ID. Let's go back to the out controller and use the request context inside the get user info endpoint. This way, we can access the user attribute we added in the guard. As you can see, we now have access to the user inside the protected route. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Write a comment with the topics you are interested in learning.